Hi, this is Luke at Vision Forward, and welcome back to another Tech Talk. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Oxite Onyx. So, the Oxite Onyx is a new wearable that's coming from Oxite out of England. That's my home country. And this device has got some cool things going on with it. It has a couple of unique features, and it also is a very small headset and lightweight, and also the price point is quite appealing. But before we jump in and take a look at the features, let's take a look at what we get in the box. So first of all, we have the box itself, quite attractive, I would suggest. Nice thick card if you're into that type of thing. And if we open it up, we can see the contents inside. So first of all, we have a uh, user guide here. Now this is actually a pretty good guide. It's uh, nice and large print and the pictures are easy to follow and uh, it's just uh, nice and laminated and everything. So good quality guide there. We also have a quick start guide if you just can't wait to get started with your Onyx once you receive it. Here we have a case for the device so we can transport it. Now, it actually doesn't fit in here uh, with the arms on, so that's the only downside, but these are removable and we'll be taking a look at that in a little bit here. Next we have a cleaning cloth if you need to clean the camera. And then we have a spare strap, so this is a strap that would go around the back of the head. We have a spare just in case we break the one uh, that is already on there. Next we have some charging apparatus for if you go to other countries, which uh, hopefully you will get to enjoy to do. And finally we have a lanyard, and this is actually kind of important for the Onyx uh, because it will allow us to hang it around our neck as we're walking, and then we can use it almost as a pair of electronic binoculars, and again, we'll be taking a look at that in just a little bit here. So in terms of controls, with the Onyx we have all of the controls located on the top surface, and uh, they are tactile, and they're all the same shape, which is a bit of a shame, but there's only three on each side, three on the left side, three on the right side. And uh, when you press them, there's actually haptics in the headset that give you feedback to let you know that you pressed a button. So it's pretty obvious, you know, that you are pressing the button and obviously, hopefully you will see the effects in the headset itself. So from the far left, we have the power button. That's gonna, well, I'm gonna let you guess what that button's gonna do. Next, we have the magnification controls, uh, plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out. So no surprises there. Over on the right side, we have some slightly more interesting controls. We have a button which will take a freeze uh, image, so a freeze frame, and then we can zoom in on that freeze frame after the fact. So let's say we're trying to see something in the distance and we're magnified, but the image is moving around a little bit too much for us to really get a handle on what it is. We can take a picture and then zoom in on the picture and hopefully that will be a bit more stable. Uh, the other two buttons, we have a menu button, so we can open a menu to change various settings, and we also have a button which will uh, do focusing. Now this is actually a pretty unique feature. For the most part these de devices are autofocus only and that is the case for this one. It can autofocus but you can also force the camera to focus by pressing that button. I do want to put this headset on to demonstrate what it looks like while you're wearing it. It is definitely one of the smaller headsets on the market so maybe it's a little more attractive than some of the others. And this is what it looks like when you are wearing it. Um, so I can't see myself, but uh, hopefully you guys can see and I don't think it looks too bad as far as this type of device is concerned. There is a uh, strap on the back. This is a Velcro strap and this allows you to adjust for the size of your head. Uh, so when Corey puts it on, he has to make it a little larger because he has a big head. But uh, when I put it on, I can make it a little smaller for myself there. And as I said before, the arms are actually removable. So when you get the headset, it does not have the arms on. You have to put those on yourself. Uh, but luckily it's super easy. They just hook on there. And so uh, this is what it would look like when the arm is off. I'll go ahead and put it back on for the moment, but it's very easy to, to get those on and off. So no problems there. Uh, another cool feature of this is we have these, uh, you know, the lenses, the eyepieces here, and these are adjustable. You can move them to the left or the right to account for, you know, the distance that your eyes are apart. So you really can position those pretty well to get in front of your eyes. And it also apparently comes with two nose pieces. Now I say apparently because ours didn't come with two nose pieces for some reason, so I'm not quite sure why. Uh, but they are removable, so there's a wider one and a narrower one, and you can pop out the nose pieces, so uh, hopefully get it fitted to the bridge of your nose. Now here's a little pro tip that I'm going to give you. Uh, at least this is the case for me with my nose. If I put this device on, and pull the strap where I think it should be. 
which is right down at the bottom of my head, um, it actually doesn't align the lenses correctly with my eyes. In order to get the lenses aligned correctly, I have to pull the strap up so it's kind of more like halfway down my head and that's a, a lot better for me. It really gets my eyes positioned right where they should be in the middle of the lenses. And if you do get this adjusted properly, you will find that the field of view is actually pretty good. Um, so it's not maybe as wide as some of the VR style wearables that we've looked at before on this channel, but it's certainly not bad. Um, it, it really does give you a decent field of view. I would suggest if you get one of these and put it on and it doesn't look quite right, just try moving the strap on the back of the head to get a, a better look through the lenses there. Um, there is also adjustable PD setting in the software so you can adjust the virtual distance of those two images and so again you can play about with that if you're getting double vision or anything like that when you first put the device on. Um, so there's room, room for adjustment there to make it more set up for exactly how you see things. The Oxite Onyx has a number of different modes that allow you to change the way that things look inside the headset depending on the task that you're trying to achieve. Now there's actually a basic and an advanced mode. In the basic mode, we just have access to brightness, which will allow us to increase or decrease brightness. We have access to the TV mode that allows us to adjust for the ambient light in the room in which we are watching television. And then we have the, the uh, advanced mode where we can choose that and switch into the advanced mode and from there we will have some other options. So these are a face tracking mode which will allow us to uh, actually look at people's faces and it will keep tracked in on the individual's face, it will try and keep their face center of the screen. We also have a uh, kind of objects mode whereby as we look around in the display will be some text telling us what we're looking at. Now it's very, uh, let's say, ineffective. It told me yesterday I was looking at a guillotine, which was kind of strange because I was just at work. So I, I don't think it's necessarily quite there yet. But uh, anyway, it's an interesting feature. And finally, we have the effects where we can go to enable certain effects. And these would be edges mode, where uh, we will see bold white outlines around the edges of items uh, that, that we're looking at. And uh, there is a contrast mode where we will be able to adjust the contrast uh, in black and white. There is an invert mode where we will invert the colors and, for example, see white text on a black background as we're reading a book. And then we can go back to the normal mode from there just to see the regular color image. All right, so let's talk about some of the features of the Onyx. Well, no surprise, it magnifies. We can zoom in and uh, it's pretty easy to do so. We have those two buttons on the top there to zoom in and out. I would suggest that's probably mostly what you're gonna be doing with this device, but there are some other things that we can do. So number one, we can adjust the brightness. One of the things I like about this device is just how bright the screens get and uh, I've really found that to be a benefit with other wearable devices. If you can get those screens nice and bright, it helps with the acuity, uh, but it also helps with things like identifying colours. And so this one I would say is definitely up there in terms of how bright you can get those uh, screens. So that's a good uh, benefit. We can also set up a TV mode and with the TV mode, we can adjust the light level depending on how much light we have in the room uh, that we're watching the television in. And so we can adjust for a dimmer room or a brighter room and that will hopefully make the TV look a little bit clearer. Now this type of feature we've seen before with the Iris Vision Live, for example, and uh, I would say the Iris Vision Lives is a little bit better in that regard but this one definitely does help as well. Some of the more advanced features are also available but I'm going to suggest that they're not the best and in fact we had Barry Asman on our live show he was talking about this device because he's uh, distributing it in the US and even he seemed a bit reluctant to talk about some of the other features and I think that's just because they're not necessarily ready for prime time yet. Now one of the features I do like, like is the edge mode in the edge mode, we see bold white outlines of objects that we are looking at, and that helps us to discern the, uh, the edges of those objects. So if we're having trouble maybe, uh, you know, just seeing where stairs are, for example, if the stairs are highlighted in white uh, around the edges, then that will help us to identify where they are. Now, I'm not saying you should wear this device and walk up the stairs, because that would actually be a bad idea, um, just because walking with this device on is not recommended, just like any other wearable. Uh, but at least you could kind of see where they are. So that mode works pretty well, and I, I do like it. Um, but there's some other modes which I'm not so keen on. 
And one of those is actually the high contrast reading mode, which would be an inverted white text on a black background. For me, it just doesn't work very well. The, the color's washed out, um, it's not very clear, and it doesn't really make the text very white or the page very black. It's all kind of wishy-washy. So I'm hoping to see an uh, upgrade in that area for sure uh, as time goes on. And of course, this being a modern day electronic device, you can upgrade the software. And as far as I know, individuals will get those upgrades for free. Uh, now you can go on Onyx uh, website to take a look at how to do those software upgrades, but uh, I think they will definitely be rolling out more and more as, as time goes on here. So we have some good features, but the main thing is magnification. How does the magnification work? What does it look like? Well, number one, it's easy to control. Um, and I do like that, but you do have to reach your hand up to the top of the headset. So depending on the mobility of your arms, that may be a problem. But I think for a lot of people, it should be pretty straightforward and easy. But one of the downsides to this device, and I think it's reflective of its cheaper price point, is that as we zoom in, things do start to get more pixelated and we get quite a lot of uh, image noise. That means it just looks a little bit kind of funny and digital and a little bit blurry. And you know, it's definitely not the best in class as far as uh, what I've seen. So compared to an Iris Vision Live, I would say it's definitely not as clear. Um, but it is significantly cheaper. We're looking at $1,800 for this device. That's the recommended retail price. So significantly cheaper. Um, as far as, you know, some other devices, uh, so let's say the eSight, I would say it's not as good as the eSight either, but it's not too far off. And I think the screens go brighter, which definitely does help. Now let's take a look at how to attach the lanyard, because I do think this is a cool feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these arms off. And we're gonna get the lanyard out of the box here. Now, I haven't actually done this before, so we're gonna see live on camera how easy it is or otherwise to attach this lanyard. So uh, hopefully we can get a drum roll here. And here is our lanyard. Now I've already got a knot in it, so that's not the best start we could have had. Underneath where we connected the strap, there is some little holes, and I am uh, led to understand that these are where the lanyard will attach to. So let's give it a try here. And it's just some clips, so it should be pretty straightforward. So here we go. Now it's actually a little harder than I was hoping for. Can't quite get my fingers to hold open, hold open the glass. Yeah, this is a difficult one. Okay, we're gonna try it a different way here. There we go. All right, one side in. Next side here. Let's see how we get on. And come on. Yes, there we go. Okay, so it wasn't too hard. I probably made it look a little harder than it actually was, uh, but ultimately it's not too hard. Now, of course, once we have the lanyard attached, now we can hang this around our neck. And this is where it's going to turn into a pair of uh, binoculars. And so as we're out and about, we don't want to be looking into the device as we're walking. It's dangerous. Um, you know, things appear to be closer than they are. So we wouldn't be able to rely on our sight at that point. But when we do want to see something, we can go ahead and hold it up. And now it's like an electronic pair of binoculars. Uh, my fingers have access to the controls just from naturally the position that I would hold it in. And so I can go ahead and use my controls to zoom in or zoom out and, uh, you know, see the thing that I wanted to look at. And once I finish, hang it around my neck. That does actually tie into one of my issues with this device, however, which is with the strap and the arms on, it's not designed to fit over your glasses. And generally we do find that if you are a wearer of glasses, it's better to wear those glasses with the electronic wearable. It will give you the best quality vision. Uh, but with this device, it's not designed to fit over your glasses. However, if we are using it in this binocular mode, obviously you can leave your glasses on at that point and just hold it over the top of your glasses. And hopefully that would give you the best quality vision but trying to watch TV for an hour while holding these up in front of your eyes is probably not going to be the most uh, comfortable thing. And so depending on what you're trying to do with the device, you know, you may want to just uh, see whether it's actually going to work for you if you need to wear it uh, without the glasses. So uh, something to bear in mind. And obviously, as always, we would suggest if you want to get this device or you're interested in it, try and get a demonstration first because it's the only way that you're going to know for sure whether it works for you. So what kind of tasks is the Oxite good for? 
what does it work for? Well, you know, it's the usual type of thing with wearables where potentially it could work for a number of different things. So we could try to watch television, we could see people's faces more clearly, we could use it while we're outside walking around as we've already uh, talked about, and use it for reading as well. I would say, as far as I'm concerned, reading probably isn't go going to be the best task for this device just because the quality of the image maybe isn't quite there when it comes to the reading side of things. Now that is going to depend obviously on you as an individual, but that's my personal opinion on the reading side of things. Television, I think, is doable. Um, the television looks pretty good through here. Again, it's going to depend on the level of magnification, but it definitely does allow you to zoom in on things, and with the brightness of the screens, that can help you to discern the colors and see things more easily. So I think that's definitely a potential use for this device, as is things like identifying people's faces as well, uh, which is often something that people with central vision loss start to have difficulty with. And so if you are one of those individuals, a device like this can help you zoom in on the face and identify a person uh, a little bit better. And when it comes to walking outside, I mean, there's many different applications. You could use it to zoom in on street signs. Depending on how far away they are, that may or may not be possible, so that's something to bear in mind. But we could also just look at the wildlife outside, or uh, we could, you know, uh, go to a sports game and zoom in on the players and see things like that a little bit more clearly. So there are a lot of potential uses, as there usually will be for this type of device, but it's all going to be dependent on you, uh, your level of vision, how far away the target is. So, final thoughts about the Onyx. Well, it's a good device for the money, that's what I would say. It's not best in class, I don't think, in any particular area, but for the $1,800, I think it performs better than at least I would have expected. And it definitely has potential there, depending on you as an individual and your level of vision loss. So, what I say is give it a try. If you can find a local dealer who could give you a demonstration, then that's gonna be the best way. And of course, if you are in the Milwaukee area, then you can reach out to us. So feel free to do so. You can call us at 414-615. 0103. You can visit our website vision-forward.org and of course you can email us in focus at vision-forward.org. What do you think about the Oxide Onyx? Do you think it's something that could help you out? Put it below in the comments, let us know what you think and if you did enjoy the video please do give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you can get updated about new videos. But for now it's been great talking to you today and I look forward to seeing you next time.